Okay, thank you. So we're ready to go. Well, hello, good uh, evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you all for being here with us uh, this evening. And secondly, and most important, I hope that uh, you're all okay, you and your loved ones. And as you know, we'll be uh, presenting a webinar in the uh, cities as uh, areas of hope. It's a transnational project of the Green European Foundation. And uh, there we have, amongst other institutions, different found green foundations in different uh, European states, Croatia, Turkey, Belgium, Spain, our friends from ECWO, and the Note Hooded Horizons Foundation that is organizing this webinar. I'll simply uh, make a brief explanation of this project, and I'll show you how we are going to structure our webinar. As you know, we have uh, four speakers that of high, high level, Janet Santh, Deputy Mayor, Vice Mayor of the um, City Country of Barcelona, Claire, you met from the Association of uh, Local uh, Authorities, uh, head, speaking about telemedicine change and the Deacon, Director of Strategies and Operations of the Mayor's, another big organization of local administrations, and Sergi Campillo, the uh, Vice Mayor, Deputy Mayor of the City of Valencia. Today's webinar uh, will include their explanations, so this should be 10, 12 minutes maximum. Uh, he froze. Oh, there he is. So, uh, well, we'll be here uh, interpreting everything in the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, we'll have uh, time for a Q&A session. And that, uh, well, that they can answer. Uh, so before we start, some logistic issues. You have a small icon to choose uh, either Spanish to listen to Spanish for the participants who speak uh, Spanish. No Catalan today. We have many people from uh, the rest of Spanish uh, state. So you also have it in English. You will have two or three chats that will be in English and two for sure in Spanish. Uh, you will see me. You will see the speakers. This is possible thanks to three people that cannot be seen here. Sandra Cruz, the person in charge of uh, the New Horizons uh, uh, Foundation. Alphonse, he's uh, the magician behind the, the scenes. And Jauma, yours truly, uh, the interpreter, for doing the simultaneous interpreting. Since I'm sure this is a time to, you know, see that we have more people. On December 10th, let me tell you, we have another project that where New Horizons Foundation participates in. We'll have a webinar um, the addressed we're talking, dealing with sustainable tourism and tourism after COVID-19. Well, with no further ado, uh, let me say that uh, uh, this project this is a transnational project uh, trying to identify the best uh, practice or the good practices that green people are doing in different cities and countries and towns in Europe beyond uh, where the different foundations represented here come from in order to uh, underscore and disseminate uh, the best practices in our cities. Oftentimes, they still clash with many uh, policies that the governments are, are sometimes undertaking, governments that are so-called progressive governments or self-called progressive governments uh, take care of the elderly uh, and, and, and environmental issues, etc. In that framework, I believe it's uh, uh, good to organize this webinar address to see how uh, cities uh, ruled, uh, governed, managed by green people are still working hard and they will still hard, they will still hard, they will still have to face this pandemic when they thought that this could be a briefer. 
uh, as I said, with no further ado, I would like to give the floor to uh, Janet Sav, a good friend of mine. She is the deputy mayor of urban affairs and many other things of the city of Barcelona. Janet, you have the floor. Thank you, Sergi. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the New Horizons Foundation the, and the Green European Foundation and all the participants in uh, this event for being able to share the different strategies of, of the work that we've been doing from different fronts in order to guarantee hope in those cities that are being reinvented, considering the common challenges we all have to face all over the world, affecting our citizenship. That's <clears throat> strategy we have goes from eco uh, strategies, underscoring life and, and, and biodiversity, making our cities healthy cities. And it's a true pleasure and a privilege to be able to share a screen uh, with you, Claire, Andy, Suzanne, Sergi, well, you name it, and to be able to, to, to share the strategies I mentioned. Let me introduce what we are now doing in Barcelona and from Barcelona. It's a relevant thing, considering those uh, different looks and that they, they're trying to be, con, you know, continuing with the same policies, that things should stay the same, nothing should change, not using the, the opportunities that a very severe situation has generated that is impacting us as uh, cities. And, and I believe that we are all aware of the fact uh, of, of the importance that the transformation of the first stones uh, of, of public spaces is one of the areas that could be most important to build new solutions while facing this thri triple crisis that we have healthcare crisis, a climate change crisis, and an economic crisis that right now is impacting us very specifically, but that we had been suffering for, for some years ago, pollution, contamination, the climate change, you name it, in the different <clears throat> moments with economic crisis that have been overlapped nearly. And in Barcelona, we're doing so uh, for uh, and we've been doing so for, for quite a long time under a new uh, idea a sustainable city after the development of a, uh, an urban planning that is eco-friendly let me focus on some data that are relevant and that w we all share from different standpoints barcelona right now is the european city with the highest car density in europe as i said six thousand per square kilometer if compared the, with london density goes down to 2,000 cars uh, or 3,000 in, in Paris per square kilometer, uh, square kilometer. So we had to act in the public space in order to observe new and different opportunities so that the, the cities are not just addressed to using cars, the importance this has for energy model, for the healthcare model, to be able to breathe a clean, uh, clean air. Barcelona has over 50% of the public space so some areas it's above 70 percent and 80 percent that are devoted not only to, to traffic and also to parking so streets are four cars so that they move around and so that they park majoritarily this is the case in barcelona and this has a direct effect on our health state because over a thousand people die every year because of the effects of uh, air contamination so from barcelona with these three uh, terrible, such terrible figures, we are now trying to work uh, on a global strategy to be able to build a model that observes a different public space. We we need it to be healthier with less uh, noise, less contamination, uh, safer, less accidents. Urban highways are over those elements, those streets that allow, go, that allow you to cross the city from end to end very quickly. We want a safe speed. We also want to strengthen the social relations and the life in neighborhoods where we have supported recuperation projects of, of public space, be better community life, the elderly who live on their own, find a, a place where they share their, their lives together, fostering proximity uh, trade. Jane Jacobs told us in that even gorgeous book called uh, Life and Death in Big Cities, where proximity uh, trade generates a community a life safety these are they are the eyes the merchants are, are, are the eyes in the proximity trade trading and a model uh, that uh, observes the needs of those groups that have been constantly excluded from urban planning such as children the elderly you name it uh, all this has to be accompanied by a, 
a, a strengthening, clear strengthening strategy with respect to public transportation, supporting the fact of urban, sustainable urban mobility, biking, uh, walking, tramways, buses, as, a, as a, the vertebrating excesses. Uh, we had created the strategic project of the whole of Barcelona. We would like to reach all neighborhoods with a very, very symbolic set of actions in the Sarda mesh work, which is a very characteristic uh, urban design designed in the 19th century. And that we would now would like to adapt to the 21st century, the need to redefine the streets uh, for the 21st century. And it's the called the super block streets and, and squares that we need in the 21st century. It's a success model that we have supported in, in different areas, highly accepted, whatever it was implemented with a high international prestige because it entails an innovative transformation in the shapes with a tactic, uh, urban, uh, urban planning with participative uh, processes that are very intense involving the whole of the community. And it's a model that we are observing and that we would like to generate a quantum leap the super block of Barcelona, the big uh, project for the whole of the city. It's this, a project that goes beyond a, a four-year legislation. It has a long scope, transforming what is temporary into something permanent, observing uh, something that is a win-win situation so that uh, areas that are that are occupied by, by certain vehicles can be redistributed so that other things can happen. That is the model that we are observing for the rest of the city and that now we would like uh, to expand so that we can connect it, to link it with all these strategic plans with the uh, climate emergency plan that we supported last year, uh, where we determined that the CO2 reduction, very, very ambitious projects and a new urban mobility plan with a drastic reduction in the year 2024 of 25% of cars moving around the city of Barcelona. And therefore, the uh, model is that if the uh, uh, Chambla, this, the, the uh, Sarda meshwork, uh, something which is uh, well, it's part of the 19th and 20th century um, structure, the super block is the new uh, trademark of the 21st century. The proposal we have and that we should start working on, well, we, we actually did uh, start working on, on it, but this should be specified into specifying 21 new green axis that uh, uh, at 23 kilometers so that you have an idea it's like three times diagonal street and we have to change uh, the structural streets that connect uh, Barcelona from end to end and that entail uh, uh, the street transformation into green axis we are supporting together with all that in the intersections of in, in, in a new opportunity we're generating new new squares 2,000 square meters each uh, square in the intersection of streets, where right now we only see cars parked parked in, in, in the uh, corners or cars moving around and changing directions. So all that change, uh, this new look uh, will mean adding squares where children can play, where we can generate daily spaces that also generate new, new forms of trade. And this transformation involves adding more space for people that walk, pedestrians, Approximately, we are speaking about over 33 hectares, which is like the La Citadel Park. Uh, I don't know if you know it, but it's it's our uh, urban lung. Uh, it's 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 a big park. Uh, it's, well, it's like you know, instead of having cars, we have trees, uh, but but it distributed in different areas of the city while incorporating in a structured city, not not something very specific, not a cosmetic change. We had to add. Uh, green areas, well-planted green areas. They will eliminate asphalt. We will eliminate asphalt in those axes and we will add green areas that look good and that allows the city uh, to be more permeable, uh, gathering the resources that we already have. This means that one of every three streets of our expansion, our Echambla, will be a green axis. Uh, this will uh, create the new city that we believe will be greener and healthier. It's a green transformation that observes a change. The use of cars uh, with the use of new urban uh, life, a healthier and more fair model. We have implemented two uh, public contests, tendering projects that are, are on, on you know, are being deployed and that will determine how the street should look like. All these projects should 
um, be the show, or show the possibility to act in only not these 22 axes and squares, but to do everything based on that goal, because this will be added to the infrastructure project we have for the rest of the city that we are developing connection of the tramway in the diagonal street, uh, which means the transformation of diagonal uh, street plus <clears throat> and access going from the, the, the mountain to the sea, uh, Via La Yetana, going, uh, you know, in the old times from the, the, the sea to, 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 to the inter, hinterland, sort of speaking. So we will draft all the projects and uh, we will be able to update uh, our proposal with new streets with uh, respect to the new identity. Uh, Barcelona has uh, a long-standing tradition uh, well, it's a very well designed city. We have integrated our um, cultural heritage, so we can feel that in, in, in the streets of Barcelona, but we also need to adapt all this to the 21st century. So all this should be combined with more uh, bike lanes, more public transportation, more infrastructures, uh, more transport infrastructures that allow us to connect the metropolitan city with uh, three and a half uh, million inhabitants with the economic core of the city, the city itself. We are defending a model, a city model where the only um, opponent is air pollution that kills us. This is uh, climate change. This makes us more fragile, more vulnerable. And in a context where we felt that that frailty from this world pandemic, we had to act more more quickly. We had to be more agile. Citizens request that, and this comes from the transformation from from a forgotten of transformation. <clears throat> Sorry, because this is part of the work we are doing with our neighbors. Because this is addressed to protect life, to protect uh, the, the, the quality of life. You know, no one should leave the city because of a health problem. Problem, and also we have to uh, be able to. to to understand that we don't have a, a B planet and we don't have a B city, but then I should survive beyond our lives uh, with a good quality. This is the project that I wanted to convey to all of you and to share with you. This is the central project of Barcelona. And uh, maybe later in, during the Q&A session, we could deepen into all this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeanette because of the huge amount of information that you have condensed and squeezed into a few minutes. And I think that uh, you all uh, follow uh, the media. These policies are not only courageous, but they are also <coughs> submitted well, under, under a crossfire from different uh, types and conditions, because it seems like uh, it's more well, severe to talk about certain things than talking about cars. cars uh, uh, you know, uh, go beyond any uh, rational thought, as many of you already know. But it is not the same to have small initiatives uh, than the uh, big and solid policy that the Barcelona City Council has been following in the last four years. But definitely in this uh, legislation, you guys are taking uh, giant steps because Geneva is pulling from, from the wagon. Many of you have realized that Susanne Riege has not been able to connect with us. There, she's had a, a, a technical problem, nothing to do with uh, Jauma uh, or, or the, the foundation or whatever. Well, it's a life problem problem and she only had that slot in her agenda. She said uh, in that WhatsApp message, thank you on behalf of the Green European Foundation for your participation. Uh, and I would like to also, she will I'd like to also thank those of you ho who are participating in the seminar. Well, following our script, we have Claire Humet, who as I said before, <coughs> is the executive director as much as sees this, and uh, it's a true pleasure for me to, to be able to introduce her. Claire, you have the floor. Thank you. I'll try to speak Spanish. It should be better to generate a, a debate so that we un understand what the say language. I believe that uh, the first thing after thanking the foundation for organizing this debate, which I believe is extremely necessary, is to say that 
for me, who I will speak, well, I'm defending uh, a network of cities that are not green or, or not all of them green. I wish, I wish all of them were green, but uh, <clears throat> I believe that all of them are cities that are on the right track of energy transition. Uh, and this has been so for many years. So I've seen that precisely when cities already had a, a very advanced plan with a long-standing strategy for many years, will progress very much whenever they had to face a crisis like the COVID-19 crisis. So I will only complement what was said by Jeanette, and I will not talk much about what uh, cities do now because no one else uh, is better placed than Sergi and Janet to explain their experiences and their, their words are worth uh, uh, many analysis. But uh, what I have seen from our standpoint and our position is that cities that uh, who had a quite clear vision, who knew that in fact there is no other planet, no B planet as she said, well, cities that um, had already started working in, in the sense of, of <clears throat> getting as close as possible to a climate neutrality, well, these cities had a huge uh, uh, advantage on how to correctly react considering the crisis. Why? Well, because <clears throat> the crisis acted as a snapshot uh, or, or as a photography. We have a developer. Before we have, in the old times, we had to develop pictures. Uh, it looked like a, uh, well, a blurry future. It couldn't be, we couldn't follow the, 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 what we were doing. But the snapshot has is, is a digital uh, snapshot. No development needed, no debates. We only have one planet. <clears throat> in terms of climate change, in terms of resources, soil, water, resources, air, well, the, the, you know, the whole story is over. I mean, uh, the virus that has, that sees no borders has been the developing agent of our uh, borders, which is the earth. Uh, before we used to argue about this, but the image is so clear now, so digital. It's been a, a, a boost, an enormous boost, boost for debate and, and for what we have always tried to do and to present on, on, on the negotiating table. It's not just a, crash, a crisis, it's Greta Thunberg. It's uh, the work of decades. Uh, the activists that have done the right job. It's not just one person, one organization, it's the joint work. We are in a moment of crisis that, has, that is helping us to open our eyes and cities that had already started working on this uh, have progressed beyond others because they started talking about this they started debating they started changing the governance at the local level they started uh, being a lot more active as cities in uh, economic terms for example like in, in in the management of energy and this change in attitude making the citizens participation uh, be more than just a consultation just a, a poll this means that cities, those cities, have a, a much stronger power than other cities where this uh, uh, opinion has not been expressed because citizens maybe didn't have any experiences on how to work altogether. And some cities, in some cities, uh, this has been something that is part of the political DNA, the political culture. This has also been fundamental in order to help municipalities to react super quickly because some municipalities for the last few years have been uh, counting on the, the well-organized citizens base. They are more active in uh, economic topics more than others. And that's why the uh, healthcare crisis has not proved or, or has proved that the city should have a certain degree of control over their productive capacity, mask production, food production, you name it. There are some things that cities should uh, have worked on previously. And uh, that capacity, that power 
of being empowered green city for green cities obviously depending on how we define green cities i will define green cities as those cities have already started that already had a, had started working uh, against climate change and against all these issues that we talked about and these cities these green cities have progressed so much because they have used also the crisis as a, a, a transformation uh, agent <clears throat> this on the capacity of cities to react very quickly, very swiftly, whenever there is a crisis. This is what uh, this uh, COVID-19 crisis proved. But to other, how to call it, uh, or how to call them, to other pillars of those cities that were very active in uh, when, when uh, putting on the uh, agenda their ambitions about uh, climate uh, change and, and, and the earth and the soil and the ground they stepped on well it meant that they were had been uh, working on you know becoming organized altogether working all together creating networks of very active cities at the regional level like in catalonia or at the national level like in spain or internationally as well but it's very important right at the moment of having to react quickly we realized that a well, cities that are very connected very well connected with others they are capable of uh, answering to, to 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 the demands of a crisis like covid 19 but also to fully participate or to demand a dialogue with the government and right now this COVID moment is a moment that we need to use in the sense uh, that this conversation i don't know if this is happening in, in spain i'd like to know but i reckon that the conversation has changed uh, quite a bit on how cities talk to governments and i truly hope that we take a big step this big step has not been made in the European institutions. Um, they do not understand how things work and they decided to, to implement recuperation plans that cost billions of billions of billions of euros without realizing how they will land on their on their lands, on their countries. Just uh, well, they react without offering a structured response. <clears throat> Uh, aids if, well, if support is, is structured is properly structured will involve offering resources to all the municipal strategies and local strategies that are will have very clearly understood how re to reach a climate neutrality and this should be the moment and we still have to see the how the green foundation can work with us to do some lobbying with recuperation plans with all the tools we have near our hands. I will stop here because I also have the control of the, the control of the member of our board of mayors. Sergio Campillo is one of our members of the board of mayors, one of the persons that actually will help us to have a very stable, a very solid agenda a very strong agenda, yes. And I truly hope that, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure that we'll be able to, to, to uh, change the European policies that have not, uh, uh, well, are not at the level of our times. So thank you. Thank you so much, Claire. And thank you for your effort, but cons well, uh, uh, hearing what, uh, uh, hearing from our position i think that you speak an absolutely fluid spanish so don't worry about this congratulations for your explanation and for um you know how to put uh, uh, things into into perspective when you think about the thousands of billions that seem like uh, are, will come in the future you know better than I do. Uh, the things will come from the plan recuperation plans and this will be added to the normal budgets we have 
Well, uh, things that are being discussed, uh, eternally being discussed in Brussels, but altogether, in the case you expressed, uh, there is a huge amount uh, to be used in what? Sometimes we wonder, we need to be more specific. We have to determine locally who will get the cake. Will it be the usual suspects? And also the capacity that administrations, the public administrations will have uh, when managing whatever comes to, to them. It won't be an easy task. Maybe during the debate time, we'll get back to, to what we said before. Thank you, Claire. Uh, I will give now the floor to Andy Beacon. He's the director uh, of operations of the Covenant of Mayors, which is another big or European organization of uh, local authorities and regional authorities. Andy, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, and apologies. I tried, I, I am in the middle of learning some Spanish, thanks to Duolingo, but uh, Duolingo's modules are not quite uh, sophisticated enough to be talking about uh, cities and, and green recovery yet. Uh, so apologies, I will stick to English. Um, I want to focus also on the, on the how, um, as well as some of the, the sort of why and where of green recovery. Um, just to take a few minutes to set out some of the evidence around the important role of, of cities right across the globe um, in being positioned as kind of key agents of change um, in addressing green uh, recovery. Um, and some of my material uh, is borrowed from another agency, from the International Energy Agency, uh, who uh, the Global Continent of Mess is working alongside and as long as as well as uh, a number of other partners um, in thinking about uh, these issues, both under the banner of global mission innovation um, and uh, firmly believe that kind of innovation has a, a strong role to play um, in thinking about how we build back differently um, around how uh, stimulus spending uh, can be used in different ways and new financial mechanisms could potentially be developed um, to help cities um, uh, think differently. Um, uh, and, and, and also just in, in kind of continuing to push the agenda um, uh, for um, more direct access uh, by cities, uh, both to, to things like research and, and development uh, spending, as well as kind of mainstream uh, economic stimulus. So the, 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 the covenant works with um, uh, regions right uh, across the globe. Um, and uh, our uh, board of mayors uh, put out a statement uh, uh, earlier this year in, in June, um, stating that we kind of firmly believe that, that we need a green recovery and that should begin uh, in cities. And that, um, as you've heard from others, we kind of stand ready to, to try to meet that challenge. Um, and uh, as we think about kind of recovering from COVID, then we shouldn't lose sight of the importance of tackling climate change. And there is a real opportunity to kind of select a, a pathway. And you've heard many others kind of talking about building back better, um, but we need to build back uh, cleaner, uh, healthier and, and more sustainable cities. So uh, what really does that start to look like and, and what does that mean? So this is some of that data from the International Energy Agency and, and they've kind of um, uh, plotted their, their pathway. And um, during kind of various states of, of lockdown um, and with the restrictions both on kind of transport, um, on, on other kind of economic activity, then we have seen a decrease globally in, in the amount of, in this case, energy sector uh, greenhouse gas emissions. But when it comes to thinking about a recovery, there are two very different kind of pathways. Um, and uh, the International Energy Agency has plotted those out um, and, and, and kind of come to these two kind of ranges uh, that you see in the, the differently shaded areas of, of the graph there, um, with and without a sustainable recovery. Um, and as we uh, approach the, the um, upcoming kind of a major anniversary of, of the Paris uh, Agreement, uh, and start to think up towards uh, COP26 uh, in Glasgow next year, then a real opportunity to kind of think about planning 
um, uh, the way in which uh, recovery spending goes in order to try to, to set um, the world really on track to meet those Paris Agreement targets um, on that pathway with a sustainable recovery, rather than um, you know, reverting to business as old normal um, and continuing um, without a sustainable recovery. Um, and there's a quite kind of marked difference in, in what that looks like, but it won't be easy. Um, so uh, alongside those kind of changes to overall economic activity, then um, energy investment will fall uh, significantly in 2020 as a result of, of COVID. Um, and in particular, uh, uh, falls in the amount of, of energy efficiency um, that contributes to that spending. So you see overall uh, uh, over there on the right hand side of that very right hand graph um, on, on energy end use and, and efficiency, then investment in 2020 down by about 12% versus 2019 on a straight sector by sector comparison. Um, so uh, although we recognize that there is a chance to try to influence decision making um, about green and, and sustainable recovery, then during the current year, kind of overall levels of, of investment, in that case in particular in efficiency, um, but you see also elsewhere in, in traditional fossil fuel sectors as well, um, has decreased. But um, we're aware that investment in, in clean energy and in related sectors is a, a strong um, kind of engine of job creation. Um, and, and many of those will come kind of in, in cities. And you see in this case on this graph, um, just look at the moment uh, for, at the one on the left hand side, then in particular, um, efficient building retrofit and efficient new buildings towards the bottom of the graph there, um, uh, particularly helpful in terms of jobs created per million, in this case dollars, um, of spending of, of capital investment. Um, you'll notice also solar PV. So um, thinking about um, uh, generating electricity with, with solar panels, um, uh, also fairly strong um, in, in that regard, um, as is changes to urban transport infrastructure. And then the, the graph on the right, um, uh, looking at things in, in slightly different sectors, um, then for a uh, kind of a global south, less developed uh, uh, economies, then recycling um, also features quite strongly um, uh, over and above other sectors. So you can see that um, there is a real opportunity around uh, green stimulus spending in, in cities um, for those to be linked to local jobs uh, and to act as, as drivers of the local economy. Um, and that's also the case kind of not only for those uh, energy sectors, um, but also for others, in this case, focusing specifically on urban transport, um, that there are employment uh, multipliers for investment in the transport sector. Um, and those are strongest around um, pedestrian infrastructure and bike lanes um, and electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Um, uh, over and above kind of traditional um, uh, transport means that you see elsewhere on the chart here. And these reviews are, are worldwide. So this graph comes from the World Energy Outlook and um, previous graphs from the IEA's and analysis uh, across the globe um, of energy in investment and, and spending. Um, uh, and so there's a, there's a real message here about uh, a key uh, moment of opportunity um, and uh, then the role, as, as Claire said, of, of networks in, in helping cities um, both to be ready to share good examples of success, to um, promote highlights and, and bring forward uh, those successes that we're ha having in order to set ourselves on the path towards um, a, a greener recovery. Um, and uh, uh, the Global Covenant and its constituent members and, and partners, um, as I say, working with a, a number of different uh, agencies um, 
in order to support that and, and make it happen. But as others have identified, still work to do to continue to um, both build that evidence base, but to really provide support where it's needed um, on, on the ground. Um, others have referred to issues around uh, capacity uh, constraints in, in planning for clean urban projects. Um, uh, and, and related issues there. Um, uh, we're doing all, all that we can by trying to bring on stream um, new capacity building and, and technical assistance um, funding. Um, the, the focus for that uh, in recent times has been outside of Europe, um, things like the City Climate Finance Gap Fund. Um, uh, but um, we stand ready as a network to work with our partners to continue to pro promote this um, super important role of, of cities as real engines of the green recovery um, and recognize that in, in, in coming back um, and addressing climate change, there are broader opportunities um, as part of that and many different um, multiple benefits that will improve the lives of, of citizens um, everywhere. So um, thank you for the chance just to um, share a bit of that information um, and, and plenty more available and look forward to continuing to collaborate. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. And thank you for your speech. And thank you for your slides about what is the situation and what are we handle uh, regarding our future. Uh, I and I thank you all of you. The three that till now you have you have talked or you have been very concentrated on time. And I think it's a pleasure to have that for especially for the audience. So without more uh, introductions, I give I would like to give the and it's a pleasure to give the, the floor to Sergi Campillo. He's the uh, deputy mayor of the city of Valencia. So thank you. The, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Gracias por. Thank you Así. for for allowing me to participate in this uh, very interesting debate where Valencia would like to offer its vision on what we have been doing in the last few years in our city. There is a fundamental difference with other cities. The progressive government that uh, is uh, leading the, the city uh, began in the, two, in the 2015, and we had had a very conservative government in the last four years, so the policy has changed. And I will tell you what experience has been when we have implemented some policies that evidently did not satisfy everyone and also wanted to uh, make reference to what was mentioned before with this uh, very uh, interesting uh, proposal, what Barcelona said about the super blocks. Uh, the La Super Illa, as we call it here, uh, which is uh, being replicated in other places, uh, policies that would like to, or that intend to change the, cover, the core uh, of the way of living in our cities. I would also like to make a brief comment about why cities play a key role in this new era in the area that we are, uh, where we're, when we're suffering the COVID pandemic, most uh, people in the world live in cities and in Spain, this percentage is, goes above 80%. Many people live in, in, in urban centers and cities have a key role in defining policies because there is where most of the population uh, live their lives, their daily lives. And therefore we are the key actors in these uh, solutions when considering the challenge that we have observed and that we didn't think would never live like the challenge of living a pandemic with so many restrictions as uh, never ever uh, considered before that's why it's more important than ever to have uh, debate forums where cities can create alliances uh, for example as uh, uh, well the, the energy city is the body where cities share our policies and our visions about the, the uh, change in the energy model and how we can create support mutual support networks in that respect i wanted to show you a brief uh, or share with you a brief presentation because i believe it's important well here i have it i will try to share it with you with the full screen 
I would definitely like to make a brief reference about what Valencia is. Many, uh, many of you are listening to us in Spain know us, but other people from from other areas of Europe do not know about Valencia, not at least as much as Barcelona. So let me just place it on on the map so that we know what we're talking about. Valencia, as you can see is a city with 800,000 inhabitants with a metropolitan area of one minute and a half inhabitants. It's a quite compact, flat city. This facilitates mobility greatly. We'll talk about mobility uh, in a few minutes. And uh, our density uh, is average high. It's the third city in Spain, and it's the capital of the third urban area of the country. It has some uh, important characteristics uh, uh, other than the urban area we can see in on this slide on the left it has a natural uh, area very important area 40 percent of our municipality is a natural park la albufera a natural park where rice grows and uh, valencia has a very specific uh, specificity if you allow me to say it so it has a big natural park an important part of the ownership belongs to the city. And this has to be understood in the planning of Valencia and the city of Valencia. These are some images of the our reality, of our uh, urban and, and natural uh, reality. We have the natural park of La Albufera, a, a wet, wetland, as you can see in the central area, in the central image. And then we have a peri-urban orchard, which is like an agricultural agricultural urban ring, it's a very important factor that defines our city, one of the very few European cities that has uh, such a developed peri-urban uh, structure coming from the uh, Arab domination of the Iberian Peninsula. These elements are very important to design a, a sustainable strategy for the future. I reckon that, uh, as we could hear, uh, before COVID uh, generated an important change in our daily lives and in the design, design of our policies. But as uh, I heard before, and, and we all heard before, some of the cities were working on urban strategies and that evidently with COVID uh, will, you know, you know, be strengthened because uh, citizens uh, in different neighborhoods of our districts uh, and, and cities are requesting more and more open green spaces, recuperating public spaces, urban public spaces that were used for car purposes to advance towards the sustainability that in some layers of population, smaller and smaller as time went by, but they still insisted uh, as this was a folkloric uh, uh, kind of a policy. Uh, it was a hillbilly policy. And well, now we have opened a new window of opportunities because many people have seen that our planet is reaching clear limits and COVID is also a consequence of the loss of biodiversity, of the law of a loss of, of ecosystems that you can see all over the place. Quite a few scientific studies will, this will be a greater cause for of pandemics amongst the different uh, uh, connection between human uh, communities and animal communities. Well, people are, are more open to, to hearing new things. We have an international context where the sustainable development uh, goals will be approved, uh, stemming from the United Nations. Each country signed this voluntarily. It's the first world regulatory framework to advance towards uh, sustainable communities with clear goals. Countries, therefore, they have to develop these strategies through the urban agendas in the case of cities. The ODS is to, to each city. Uh, it was done through the urban agenda. This was approved in, in Spain in the year 2019. And Valencia, when we began with this new mandate in the year 2019 with the socialist government, we started working in the design of our own urban agenda, 2030, where we want to um, you know, show some clear elements determining where our city should head to in the coming 20, 30 years time. In the middle of all this, uh, COVID appeared and we had to um, put many of our policies into consideration. We had to face a very com difficult com com situation with very strict uh, lockdown in, in Spain. And then we had to, you know, cover the healthcare and uh, social uh, emergencies. But connecting this with the urban agenda, the municipal 
government uh, together with the opposition generated a framework uh, reconstruction agreement for the city where many of these policies have been uh, reflected the first access is a healthy and sustainable city that i will mention in a second uh, in order to, 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 to make the long story short, please let me know that I'm uh, talking too much and I will stop. What have we done in Valencia for the, in the last few years? Evidently, there is a fundamental factor in this slide. Well, I really like to see it because this reflects uh, this new concept of our city. This is the, uh, well, the, the city council. Uh, square where you can see on the right uh, hand this is the city council and two, some year, months ago this was a communication uh, street uh, to, to connect urban and cars uh, in movement through a set of uh, tactic urbanism uh, measures because the urban uh, planning uh, of the square uh, will come in a few years time we have to redesign well we had a public uh, tendering and now we decided to do uh, to offer uh, this. Uh, we decided to urbanize and uh, 12,000 square meters. I mean, on the picture on the right uh, shows what happens when you open uh, these areas to uh, as a public. So, well, children take the streets, take the squares. When children play in the squares that have been recuperated, and this is a success for citizens. Just where we had cars, where uh, we had a very hard and harsh square just to allow people going from point A to point B. Now it's a key, a core center uh, where our children and our elderly people can enjoy. And if uh, these people enjoy, uh, the rest of the neighbors will also enjoy in our city. This has been one of our last steps in a process that we prepared in the last few years of trying to recuperate this public space. We have recuperated uh, areas for uh, pedestrian use, 60,000 square meters in the city of Valencia. This means an important uh, evolution with respect to what we had before. Not only in the squares of the center of the city, we are also in the middle of a uh, program called Valencia uh, the City of Squares. As Barcelona, a super uh, block in Barcelona, we have Valencia, the city of squares, and we want to recuperate the squares in, this, in the downtown area of Valencia so that these places are core areas where our neighbors can spend the day. Because this is one of the demands of our citizens in COVID times, after a very hard lockdown in our homes where many people do not have uh, the, an adequate home because maybe they are missing balconies, terraces to just take your heads out and breathe some clean air. People said, well, we need the public space. This is one of the consequences that has uh, been strengthened with COVID-19. These are other examples of the recuperation of blocks in different neighborhoods that have these inner uh, patios and other examples of, of, of recuperation, such as the, well, the design of uh, uh, school route, safe school routes, mm, well, this, our kids you know, won't need a car to be taken to school. This means that children will be able to enjoy the public space in a different way. This is a, a slide about a revolution that I called the revolution of sustainability and mobility that we have in Valencia since the year 2015. We had a sustainable urban mobility plan approved in the year 2013, but it was locked up in a drawer for many years. In the year 2015, it started to implement the sustainable urban mobility plan. And the consequences of this plan uh, includes an important bet to use uh, bikes uh, and bike lanes in our flat city. So we have uh, developed an interconnected uh, meshwork of, of the bike lanes. We have increased in, a, well, we have a total of 156 bike lanes in our cities because people requested the use of bicycle as a safe transportation system in times of COVID. So using a bike in, in, in cities has uh, is highly appraised, uh, considering, uh, well, that Spain is not a, a, a traditional bike country, but we had a, a small bike uh, uh, lane measure that allowed us to, to reach all the areas of the city. Now, uh, this is not so anymore. We have increased our mesh work, our network uh, uh, in the last few years, and people feel very happy about this bike lane uh, network. 
the bank users in Belenta seem to be the uh, happiest uh, considering the expansion of our the expansion of, of our network. So we want to take space away from cars and give it to bikes and to pedestrians. These are some of the examples of these uh, bike lanes we uh, worked on for the, few, for the last few years in our city. Another important aspect that we developed in the last uh, few years, and mainly in the last few months in the year, we started in the, the year 2019, well, energy transition system in our cities we had the action plan for climate uh, and energy. It's a plan that was approved with goals that we have uh, that, that allowed us to, to reduce CO2 emissions in our city. But in the last few months, we just made a quantum leap because uh, we have um, improved uh, energy use municipally. We have uh, this energy that uh, inform uh, uh, people on how to use stuff consumption system in buildings in, in the cities in Valencia, this has huge potential in the respect and we are so developing the energy group so that neighbors can uh, reach an agreement and then produce community energy and use it also as a community in our city. This is a huge step forward in Valencia city that we will support in the coming years. We are also uh, see the, the use of photovoltaic uh, setups uh, um, areas that protect people from the sun they act as a shelter and there is a very interesting project uh, in school patios to create these photovoltaic um, patios to protect school children from the sun in valencia this is very high and also to uh, reuse that energy for the good of the of the schools so they are trying to be ener energetically very efficient. And last but not least, let me stop for a second uh, on, on a very important project we have in the city of Valencia. We're developing a green infrastructure strategy for the city. And I would like to thank Barcelona because they received us very kindly to tell us what their biodiversity plan was like, and they were in a plan. So approximately in Valencia city, we have 5 million cities of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, areas with green uh, squares and green air, uh, green zones. Uh, we'd like to see where we would like to take our green infrastructure in our city. Uh, we have, well, different shelters, different roofs. Buildings in, in Valencia have very flat roofs that will allow us to set up a photovoltaic uh, uh, setups, uh, uh, orchards, man uh, the gardens managed by, by neighbors themselves. They would like to inform our neighbors about this. And this is the uh, front page of the biodiversity uh, plan of Valencia. Our own urban, green urban infrastructure, the city's infrastructure should be connected to La Bufera Park, Natural Park. In the last few years, We've been implementing these green areas in, since the year 2015. We have increased 370 square, uh, 375,000 uh, square meters. And due to COVID, if we already understood the importance of our green areas in our cities, I believe I believe that when people, at least in Valencia, uh, started to to be go back to quote unquote normal life people uh, after the lockdown uh, decided to to go to the green areas of the cities because they realized that these green areas are nature it's our contact with nature in our cities and therefore it was very very important to uh, go back to to the green areas we understood from the very beginning that unlike uh, other cities uh, we immediately opened the green areas of our city because this uh, spaces uh, people is where people needed to connect with with nature after the pandemic after the the, the the tough lockdown and we wanted to open these green areas to the, our citizenship and let me finish with an interesting slide and uh, i will finish with this here we can see the green infrastructure that we would like to develop in our city we have a huge garden which is the Turia River Garden, the old river that was uh, taken somewhere else towards the south. 
this became a garden this river basin became a garden and we have a huge opportunity in this new uh, river basin on the south because this uh, is just a, a, a cement basin and we have to renet renaturalize it is speaking that that basin uh, this is a, a project simulation it's a project for Valencia for, for the med a metropolitan area. This includes other cities. This is highly motivating and, and challenging uh, project for the coming decades. This is thrilling because we want to connect the metropolitan area through the green infrastructures, stitching the, ur the metropolitan urban spaces at the super municipal structure through a, a network of green spaces, as we can see on the left. All these uh, cities, municipalities of the metropolitan area of Valencia, our own districts, our towns have to be connected with green infrastructures that allow people to, to walk, to communicate, to, to you know, to take, to take, grab your, their bikes, uh, but not having to use a public transportation. This is a right of, that people have, the right of walking uh, uh, from point A to point B uh, using a well-developed green infrastructure. And this is uh, another project uh, that intends to renaturalize the seafront. And well, let me finish by saying thank you for this debate, allowing our city to explain what we are working on, what our green and sustainable policies are like, and definitely to answer any questions that you would like to uh, answer about your experience or about anything else you would like to definitely talk about. Thank you. Thank you, Sergi. To tell you the truth, uh, those of us who spend many days in Brussels, seeing the pictures of Valencia generates a huge, huge envy. Uh, let me ask you, the container you have behind you, it's, it's a real container. It works, the green one? Yes, it's a small, uh, uh, it's, it's a small uh, crystal igloo that uh, was a present from Co Vidrio. Well, it's uh, subliminal uh, publicity. Uh, good for you. Thank you. As we said before, with uh, we're at the beginning of our webinar, we are running. Uh, uh, not late, but early. Actually, we uh, have we have enjoyed uh, many webinars, but this is truly a, a pleasure to, to have you all here. And we have several questions. Obviously, we cannot ask all the questions. I will try to make a selection if you allow me to do so, because someone should do it, and uh, we will uh, continue with the ordinary of, of intervention. The first question is addressed to Janet Sant. And the question says, well, Janet, do you believe that uh, the continuous criticism that are being made from different uh, uh, media and different con different parties, different platforms are due to, well, I don't know what they are due to because he froze. So we'll have to determine what they are due to. We lost them, we lost them, Janet says. This is the whole intervention of the mayor's hand. <laughs> Janet, I think that you have to ask the question and answer. Oh, no, the question was, I was, I'm sorry, I was, I was told that uh, we had a, a problem, a technical problem. Well, the, many of the criticism from, that come from different platforms, few, but the heavy platforms, some uh, media, some some uh, article writers criticize that the measures that you're taking uh, are not very bad, are not very good. I mean, to per se, they're pretty bad. And he froze again. <laughs> I think this problem should be, could be solved if we had uh, an RSDI connection. I can imagine, uh, the, what the question is. No. We couldn't hear you. Let me go back to the question. The question is, what projects, what pro participation programs and information have you developed from the City Council of Barcelona 
with respect to the new mobility because you know that many other criticisms come uh, from people who say that there's no participation, there's no interest, and this is the dictatorship of Mrs. Sand. That's uh, what they call it, your dictatorship. Now, first of all, uh, let me say how many people uh, that request uh, us to go beyond our our limits in some platforms people say well this has a huge projection but many people through networks through forums neighborhood uh, debate areas say that we are going very slowly so when we are pulled from uh, different ends we are more focused we are more centered we are developing a project that is a realistic project that it's a necessary project and that it's a gradual project because we understand that everything has to be uh, you know, adapted. There's a, a model change, an important model change. We are not just observing something simple. Evidently, some people uh, say, well, when you make such a behavior change, uh, you will face a, a certain degree of resistance. So people say, well, the effort for all of us is huge, but the benefit this is what I tried to show. The benefit for everyone is much bigger and with a little uh, effort and, 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 you know, with the coaching of administrations, we can all be highly strengthened. Out of Andy's uh, intervention, I would like to take a key element. Many of the criticism also has to do with the economic model, the uh, job creation model, and this is one of the key uh, elements. The urban transformation and the ch model change has to generate new opportunities, economic opportunities that are different, different from what we had before. More fair, better redistributed, better paid. Incorporating that uh, rational, uh, that's uh, sustainable, real and sustainable presentation. We've talked about the green capitalism. This is a brainwashing, it's not for real. We wanted something solid and the reconversion of the industry is a fundamental element. And I'd like to show examples when I speak beyond the, the criticism we receive that generate a, uh, a useless echo. I like to talk about figures and focus on strategic projects. And I always look at what the Württemberg region did when they transformed things, when they had to face a mining crisis, they transformed the whole sector jobs that were uh, eliminated they were retrained and they invested in the whole region to generate a change in, in, in the rehab of, of uh, buildings uh, there was a, an important bet they generated new jobs and to me there is another uh, example the case of switzerland they've uh, specialized in mobility as a service something connected to the services of uh, all the complementary mobility that can generate the public infrastructure of mobility. These are examples that are close to us and that they can inspire a, a an eco transition of our, of our economy, something necessary. And we have to understand, so you know uh, what happens in Barcelona, you know, the food industry, the agro food industry, etc. This strategy of the food industry is very important in the farming, surrounding farming park, uh, um, around El Prat, we had a possibility of new job creation, you know, creating a, 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 a food creation sovereignty, key elements that we should potentiate and that have always been uh, at the service of speculation, the, the importance uh, of, you know, you know, stirring things up so that they are part of the, the people's rights. And when we can prove that all this is not just a fight of some against the others. And then we have alternatives. We have new alternatives that generate new jobs, stable jobs, not precarious jobs for the future that build uh, an urban space, a city which is healthier, where our children can breathe at peace. The future of these kids' lungs is, is guaranteed. And we do so with an approach which proves that living in a city is possible. No matter how old you are, what is your uh race gender sexual orientation you name it they are safe cities that are betting for the strengthening of these values well these are the key ingredients to prove that the model is valid we'll have to you know you know bear with all this criticism with a great deal of love and pedagogy generating participative processes as we have always done COVID 
uh, placed us placed us in 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 a difficult uh, space we learned little by little and step by step but it's also true that right now with uh, the project that we just launched i cannot see more people i cannot meet with more people we are meeting with neighbors and that began in the year 2015 in the case of barcelona we've been uh, doing so for the last two legislations so everyone knew everyone knew we had it in our uh, uh, electoral plan and uh, this what we're doing is what we are committed to doing so with all the respect to all opinions and uh, i believe that we will uh, definitely observe the, the, the bet we have barcelona has to continue barcelona has to be possible and currently the only possibility is, is uh, but the solar Barcelona is, is, is possible, is changing the model with new energies, with uh, the management of climate change and, crisis, and, 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 and energies management, uh, new opportunities, jobs, new jobs, uh, non precarious jobs. These are central axis of our action plan. And this is a message for both Clara as well as, and we need help, we need support. In the rebuilding agreement of, of Europe, we should be taken into consideration because this European uh, reconstruction for Europe uh, has to include certain industries, which from the perspective of a model change uh, is good, but we also need the proposals from other cities have to be uh, considered. We have to have our own voice in these areas in Europe and not always go through states who are not in the trenches, who are do not know about the Im municipal emergencies as we do. We have to, you know, uh, you, we don't have to lose face when we talk to neighbors, when we hear their requests because we uh, because they need to, to hear our answers. Our And we, we need uh, the city alliances that can have and show a joint voice in the European Union, which is regulating things uh, proactively in the area, in the area of air, air contamination. If we did not have uh, such a legislation, Madrid wouldn't have a central Madrid and many other projects would have, you know, fallen. I mean, they would have dropped from this uh, project. So we have to appraise uh, the value of your actions from green areas, uh, from green groups. The Green European Foundation is, is a key example. They are paramount in these strategies. So we need to elevate those, to raise those voices in order to strengthen even more the fact that these resources come to us, allowing us to prove that we will not go against anyone. Quite the opposite. We're making proposals so that everyone lives a better life. Thank you, Jeanette. As you know, I am quite older than you are and all the fights you are fighting. Uh, no, I had uh, to fight in El Prat municipality. I, I was a, a, a deputy mayor um, when uh, the changes in the El Prat streets was presented. So we have to know that even the most critical citizens, if you well, if others recuperate the government of the, of, of the city, none of those measures will be taken back. No one, no one, I believe that in Europe, I have made the study, but no one ever in Europe has uh, changed the, some of these plans because this means quality of life. So go ahead with it, continue fighting with a lot of energy. Well, very easy because you, you link your question with the next question with Claire. With Claire. Uh, this question is, is, is for Claire. You talked about the European funds. What are you considering? Some people fear that uh, funds are uh, allocated to the usual suspects. What are you doing from energy cities with respect to criteria in the distribution of funds and who will decide once this is in the hands of public or regional administ administrations and, and local administrations and, and the states? Who will control of doing what, when? other than your concern, what are your proposals? Yes, uh, we're, we've been trying to do things uh, from the beginning of the crisis. Uh, there's a recuperation plan that is being prepared. Uh, we need a dialogue with the commission. And I don't know why, but is it quite late now? Do I, do I feel like uh, leaving the, the diplomatic level aside and, and talk more boldly? But I think that we should start with uh, 
a totally pirate strategy and say that we will prepare huge innovative projects, incredible projects about hydrogen, and then we will have the money. And then once we have the money, we will use that money uh, wherever it is needed. Because the incredible thing is the following. The problem is that uh, what we need to do now are complex projects, projects that require little money, But this means lots of little projects also have a big projects as Jeanette described, which is uh, something that will change the city completely. But inside the project, I believe that we will uh, have very many small projects that will change the neighborhoods. And this in the commission, because this is a mega organization, but nationally, uh, they don't really know how to uh, change uh, the funding system towards uh, projects that are smaller, that are more participative, projects that uh, require company, private companies, like uh, the projects uh, of energy, city, 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 uh, energy that you did in, in you organized in Valencia, and that you can also find in Barcelona and many other cities this is an investment that doesn't require so much public, so many public funds, but we need a, a greater capacity, as you very well said, Sergi, so that municipalities can help uh, from the very beginning of the project. So all this coordination, all those uh, actions should have access to uh, a minimum of information and technical support and we have to invest on that because we need the information. The future is now with huge visions, some restructuring uh, projects of, of the public spaces, but very many small projects. I, I believe that right now uh, that uh, avenue didn't lead us to, to any successes. On Friday this week, we will talk, be talking with Vice President Timmermans. Five uh, mayors will talk to him. I don't expect much from, from this conversation because Timmermans, as a, pres, as a Vice President, what he wants is to play his little game. And his little game is the climate pact. I don't know who's listening in YouTube right now. Maybe I should be more careful with my, my words. But in any case, he wants, uh, he wants everyone to be supporting the commission, but no one knows how uh, people will be helped. And the Friday after, with together with Sergi Campidio, we have a conversation with the commissioner of energy, Mrs. Simpson, and there we will ask her how to make all the money of recuperation can be more specific. All these are conversations that we're having now, but the, we're heading the right track. We're heading the right uh, direction. And as Janet said before, for decades, we've talked about green growth. And even if we say so now, and even if there is something behind, things are, are changing little by little. So I truly uh, hope to, to see something happening, but the mechanisms are not there anymore. And this is a problem because money without a guideline, without a thinking is, well, it's of no use. We need the thinking as well. Thank you so much, Claire. In our list of people who signed to this uh, webinar, uh, it's approximately 90 people. No one's from the commission, so don't worry. Next question. We have more questions than, than time. We have more questions that require long explanations. Don't worry. Those of you who ask the questions, uh, well, we will send your questions to the speakers and we'll see what the answer is. Next question is for Andy, one for each. Andy. The, the, the New Horizons Foundation is in Catalonia, as you very well know. There is a question that comes from the world of uh, 
aviation. What do you think uh, about the, the future of aviation, commercial aviation? Before you answer, Andy, I would like to uh, apologize, uh, excuse Janet Sanz. She has to leave her to another meeting in the same format. So thank you so much, Janet. We'll still be in contact in the near future. Thank you. All the best. Take care. Bye bye. Andy, what is the European about the future of aviation in, in Europe? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Not my specialist uh, subject uh, when it comes to the, the technology. Um, what I will say is that uh, at the moment, uh, many of those watching will be aware that um, there is an issue in that emissions from aviation are not fully reflected inside uh, most uh, emissions uh, counting mechanisms. Um, and there is work that can be done to um, kind of bring a greater representation of what's truly happening uh, than inside the emissions inventories. Um, that applies both at, at kind of individual city scale, um, but also then nationally as well as internationally. Um, and, and, you know, obviously there's recognition that at the moment the, the full scale of the um, uh, kind of emissions from that particular sector are, are not recommended, uh, are, not, are not recognized, but then they're not necessarily alone. Um, in, in that regard. And uh, I think, you know, as, as cities, then we've seen some uh, start to experiment with looking at consumption based uh, emissions reporting um, and, and mechanisms to start to uh, look at and account for kind of the true value of, of total emissions. And it will be interesting just to see if that approach uh, kind of continues to grow and in that way, uh, kind of emissions from that sector, um, as well as others, can be recognised in, in emissions accounting work that, that cities are leading. Um, on, on the technologies, um, you know, many uh, possibilities that are out there. Um, uh, and I mentioned the, the, the role of, of kind of innovation, and I'm sure we'll continue to see um, in investment, uh, both in, in, in kind of um, uh, continuing alternatives to to fossil fuel um, burning in, in that sector. Um, but I think, uh, you know, a, a lot of work to do to, to advance towards it, it, its full recognition as well alongside that. So sorry, yeah, not, not something I can answer on the, the specifics of, of kind of fuels and the technology in the sector, but I, I think there is work to do there. Thank you, thank you, Andy. Thanks God you are not a specialist. Thank you very much for you. <laughs> Uh, Anza, would you like to um, would you like to add something of what is the vision of the global the, glo the, common, the global government of mayors regarding the recovery uh, plan from the European Union? Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, so then, uh, and uh, so um, part of what will happen through the green recovery will be an ambition for Europe uh, to then. Uh, kind of both ad advance and ambition on climate issues and in this important year where globally uh, nations across the world are looking at their uh, nationally determined contributions towards uh, increasing ambition in advance of the climate talks in Glasgow, um, then that uh, positioning and the diplomacy and, and advocacy that will come from the European side uh, uh, alongside that, where those emissions reductions can really be recognised, um, will be important. And for us as the, the global covenant, then um, we also have some work underway to uh, bring forward the idea of regional and local contributions um, as contributions to those NDCs. So to really build from the, from the bottom up. Um, and so part of our ambition is to, uh, you know, help to bring forward and, and foster a, a, a scheme um, that then aligns um, closely with that national and international accounting, but really builds from the, from the bottom up and, and to use that to advance ambition. So whether it is in, in aviation or, you know, in other sectors, 
um, then one of the roles that, that the Global Covenant has played is to aggregate opportunities from um, individual cities into a kind of global estimate of emission savings potential um, and an aggregation report kind of published every year um, that builds on work done by the European Covenant and, and all of the kind of member um, uh, covenants of, of the Global Covenant to then build up to, to an estimate of potential emission savings from cities to continue to, to build that case um, uh, you know, to kind of give cities a, a stronger voice, both in kind of important international uh, climate negotiations, um, but th but through many other fora, whether that is kind of more direct access uh, to funding that's directed towards uh, green green sectors or elsewhere. So I think that there's an important role to continue to play in kind of bringing together a, a collective voice from many, many cities, you know, now well over um, 10,000 committed to the mm -hmm. Global Covenant of Mayors through EU Covenant as well as others um, around the world. Um, and I think a, a real opportunity to continue to, to build from that. But, but really that needs an element that comes kind of right from the bottom um, up rather than as, as others have said, uh, you know, kind of those in, in seats of, of, of power in different locations around the world expecting to govern from the top down. Uh, gracias, Andy. Thanks, Andy, indeed. Um, uh, Sergi, tenemos las últimas preguntas para ti. Como Sergi, tú eres... we have the last questions for you. So you are used to tough questions. These two come from the same person, probably living in Valencia. Is the City Council of Valencia, is, is it considering the possibility of giving priority to uh, to tramways versus uh, private cars? And secondly, in the new PIES, do you observe the possibility of uh, sorry i lost that part so that we have smaller green areas but maybe that the addition of all of these small green areas can add up to a bigger total well, with respect to the first question valencia has transport systems that until short ago had a uh, inefficient management because urban buses in valencia were managed by the municipal transport agency, which is totally municipal, and tramways and, and subways were managed uh, by Ferrocarriles de la Generalitat Valenciana, which is uh, an autonomous regional company. And there was no no body, no other uh, metropolitan transport authority there, though we created one, two, three years ago. And it is still in the process of integration of the different modes of transport. Uh, well, that was our starting point when we got there uh, in the year 2015. Each administration was managing his its or well, its its public transportation system. The case of the tramway that crosses the city. Uh, well, it was the first uh, city that recuperated uh, tramways uh, in 1994. And it was the first one recuperating it. Well, there is some um, pedestrian priority in certain areas. There are some, some other priority for tramways in certain other points, but not in the in most of the network. This is an issue that should be requested by ferrocarriles and by the railways of the government. So that from the city council, no one had that uh, priority. There is a, a passage, pri a priority of passage uh, whenever the, 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 the train, the subway is approaching the, the stop green lights uh, turn on and, and green and, and red lights also go on for for cars if this uh, this is approved in the general budget of of spain will receive some 40 million euros and the first time that we receive such a big amount of money with uh, respect to the green parks uh, is, uh, connected to uh, Janet said uh, this super block in Barcelona, like we had to eliminate asphalt and we had to eliminate asphalt from some, some areas of the city while creating draining surfaces that uh, allow water to be percolated and absorbed uh, on the ground, not collapsing our uh, water relief systems in case of, of huge uh, rain storms 
that are quite frequent here and that generate a, 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 heat, a heat island, as we call it. Our trees are uh, feel happy when they have small uh, amounts of water, but uh, then when we have uh, just few drops, we have uh, increased the size uh, of, uh, of of uh, what we call the, the basins around the tree, uh, the pits that uh, allow us to, 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 to work differently. Uh, these uh, smaller neighborhoods uh, uh, require these uh, pits around the trees, the parts of the base of the trees, so that they can have their own trees. Well, thank you very much, Sergio, for your answer for that very specific information to consider these two very specific questions logically asked by a Valencia citizen. Well, uh, I would like to thank you all on behalf of New Horizons Foundation and on uh, behalf of the Green European Foundation, particularly Janet, although she, she left Claire, Andy, and Sergio for your participation, for your uh, food for thought and your presentations, uh, very specific, very positive explanations, and very deep and, and highly addressed to the topics that we were dealing with. Uh, well, this is, uh, Riga uh, was disconnected uh, right at the uh, moment she had uh, uh, free, some free time in, in her agenda, but they, well, she went back to tell me that they will to greet you all and to thank you all. On December the 10th, we'll be back here to talk to you about tourism, not only for to Mediterranean tourism, touristic cities, but also for those uh, those cities that had a huge problem, which was the massive tourism and the massification of our cities. Thank you again, and I hope to see you very, very soon. Please take care of yourselves. Follow the uh, follow the rules that, that will keep you safe in the future. Thank you, and take care.